بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وبعد Fighting in times of weakness The following statements by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله clearly illustrate what Muslims should do in a time of weakness and what they should do in a time of strength uh, It's also regarding why the companions رضي الله عنهم and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم were not instructed to fight the kuffar in Mecca. Before I begin, I must encourage everyone to listen to all of this talk, especially the ending, as I believe it is the most beneficial. Jazakumullahu khairan. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, said, it was instructed to abstain from fighting them due to his inability and the inability of the Muslims. Then, when they migrated to Medina and gained assistance, Allah permitted him to make armed jihad and then when they grew in strength Allah prescribed for them fighting and did not prescribe fighting for them for their own safety as they were not able to fight all of the kuffar. But when Allah opened up Mecca for them and halted fighting against the Quraysh and the kings of the Arabs and a delegation of Arabs came into Islam Allah instructed the Prophet wasallam. Fighting all of the kuffar except those who had a temporal bond of agreement and Allah instructed him to annul those absolute agreements and that which annulled it was leaving fighting. This is taken from a Jawab al-Sahih, volume 1, page 237. Shaykh al-Islam also said, The reason for that tax upon them is only when the deen is manifest and raised such as jihad and their adherence to paying the jizya and subjugation. So when the Muslims were in a state of weakness in the beginning, in the beginning duty which the non-Muslims paid to the Muslim state was not divinely legislated. Only after the deen had been completed and manifest was that divinely legislated. Iqtida' Surat al mustaqim Volume 1, page 420. Then he said, this was the result of patience and consciousness of Allah which Allah instructed the Muslims to have at the very beginning of Islam and during that time the jizya was not taken from any of the Jewish community or other non-Muslim communities who were living in Medina those verses applicable to every Muslim in a state of weakness who is not able to aid Allah and his messenger with his hand or via his tongue i.e. by speaking but could help by using what he was able to by his heart and the legs the verses about subduing those non-Muslims who have contracts with Muslims are applicable to every strong believer who is able to help the deen of Allah and his messenger with his hand and tongue, meaning speaking. It is with these verses that the Muslims were applying during the last epoch of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and during the epoch of his rightly guided khalifs. We've reached the ending now and this is maybe the most important part of the whole article. So everyone please pay careful attention to the following statements by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah as it is made absolutely clear regarding what to do in the times of weakness and strength. So continuing. And thus it will be until the day of judgment as there will never cease to be a group from this ummah who are well established on the truth who help Allah and his messenger with complete help so whoever from the believers so whoever from the believers is weak in the earth or is weak in the time in which he is living in must apply those verses of the Quran which mention patience and forgiveness against those who are seeking to harm Allah and his messenger from those who were given the scriptures prior and also from the polytheists to repeat as this is extremely vital that we understand this so whoever from the believers is weak in the earth or is weak in the time in which he is living in must apply those verses of the Quran which mention patience and forgiveness against those who are seeking to harm Allah and his messenger from those who were given the scriptures prior and also from the polytheists contrasting this with the following as for those people who are in a state of strength then they are to apply the verses regarding fighting the leaders of kufr who slander the deen they are also to apply the Quranic verses regarding fighting those 
who were given the scriptures prior until they pay the jizya and are subjugated. And this is found in Asarum al-Maslul, volume 2, page 413. That's the end of the article. So brothers and sisters, let us ask ourselves, how far away are the people of takfir and khuruj from the understanding of the salaf when they don't even recognize, they don't even acknowledge that a state of weakness can even exist within this ummah and want to wage jihad irregardless of the conditions and the situation of the ummah? Allahu musta'an. Subhanakallah wa bihamdak. Ashru an la ilaha illa ant. Wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.